Welcome to part two of the Affordable Buzzer's free easy quiz software tutorial. In part one, we saw how easy it is to conduct a basic quiz game while keeping your players and audience fully engaged. In this section, we'll cover the advanced features of Easy Quiz and show how they add more flexibility for your quiz and more fun for everyone. From the menu screen, click the gear icon, which most people recognize as a way to change settings. You'll be presented with the Quiz Setup screen where we have a number of parameters to control various features of the Easy Quiz game. There are two game types, Standard and Team Play. In Standard Play, each buzzer acts independently with an assigned player or team name individual sound, and individual score accumulation. The team play game allows you to group two or more buzzers to act as a single team buzzer. We'll stay with standard for now and take a look at team play in part three of this tutorial. This field sets the initial value for each question, that is, the points awarded for a correct answer. The answer value reduction factor is used to reduce the point value of a question each time a wrong answer is given. The factor set here is multiplied against the current answer value. This value of 0.5 means the value of the question will drop by 50% for each wrong answer. To keep the full initial value of the question, no matter how many wrong answers might be given, set this factor to zero. This field determines how many points are deducted for a wrong answer. The value of 0.3 means 30% of the current answer value will be deducted from the player's score. If you don't want any score reduction for a wrong answer, set this factor to zero. To deduct 100% of the answer value, set this factor to one. The penalty time feature prevents aggressive players from controlling the quiz. The two second value shown here means if a player presses their buzzer early, that is before the buzzer's on screen is displayed, their buzzer will be deactivated for two seconds beginning when the buzzer's on screen does appear. This will give all the other players a chance to buzz in before the penalized player. Likewise, if a player presses their buzzer while the red name screen is displayed, before the wrong answer screen appears, their buzzer will be deactivated for two seconds. We'll see this feature in action in a moment. This is the name of the font to be used when displaying player names when they buzz in. Obviously, the font will need to have been installed on your computer to be available, and you'll need to know the correct font name. This checkbox causes all player names to be displayed with an appropriate status color whenever a player buzzes in. Let's turn this on so we can see how it works. The font size can be adjusted with this setting primarily to accommodate very long player or team names. You'll want to keep this as large as possible so your audience can easily read the player names on screen. We'll see how these colors are used in a moment, but if you wish to change them later, you have these tools to use. If you want to make the Back to Menu button that normally appears on every screen disappear, simply uncheck this box. You can always press the M key to return to the menu, even if you have this button turned off. This checkbox controls the automatic display of the scores screen at the end of each question. If you uncheck this box, the scores will not appear at the end of each question, but you can still show the scores screen any time the Get Ready screen is displayed by pressing the S key. To display a countdown timer whenever a player buzzes in to answer a question, enter a value here for the number of seconds to be used when the clock starts. The timer will count down the seconds from this initial value until it reaches zero. If you don't want to display the countdown timer, set this value to zero. For this demonstration, we'll set the time to eight seconds. The Sounds tab presents a screen where you can customize every sound used by Easy Quiz. The sound files must reside in the Sounds folder as described in the PDF User Guide so they are easily selectable in these pull-down fields. We've supplied a variety of sounds for you, but you can add even more if you like, or even create your own wave sound files. This handy play button allows you to hear each of the sounds you select. Here are the sounds for the 10 players used in a standard game. These sounds are used in the team play quiz, which we'll see a little later on. This is the sound you hear for a wrong answer, the sound for a right answer, and so on for the screens or items listed. This sound is used for each second as it displays on the countdown timer, which we'll see in a moment now that we've turned this feature on, and this sound is played when the timer expires. This tab provides a means to save all the settings you've made on the setup screen, all the player and team names, 
all the sound assignments, and even the scores for your quiz in progress. This information will be written to a file on your computer so you can load everything back into EasyQuiz at a later time to continue your quiz. So let's see how that works now. Let's skip over the Restore section for a moment and look at the Save Config field. Simply enter a file name for your saved quiz and click Save. This message verifies that your quiz has been safely saved to your computer. Now click on the pull down in the Restore section above. And there's your saved quiz file. But what's this other file? Auto Save Config. EasyQuiz uses this default file name to automatically save your quiz whenever anything changes, including the scores. That way, if your computer crashes or you simply forget to save a quiz before exiting the program, you can still retrieve all the information. If you ever do need to restore using the Auto Save Config file, just be aware that it must be the very first thing you do when starting the EasyQuiz application, even before clicking any of the menu items. Notice, too, that if you want to restore the scores along with player names and quiz settings, you must check this box. Restoring the scores separately provides the option to start a new quiz with the same group of players without having to manually zero out all the scores. With this Save and Restore feature, classroom instructors and professional trainers can create config files for each body of students, church and civic organizations can create files for different clubs or age groups, and even home users can have quiz settings ready to go for different groups of family members or friends. Let's see how our quiz works now with our new features turned on. Just click Begin Quiz. For this question, Michelle jumps the gun and presses her buzzer now before the buzzer's on screen is presented. Nothing visible happens, but once the buzzers are activated, Michelle's buzzer will wait an additional two seconds before being activated as a penalty for pressing it too early. Now the quiz host reads the question and activates the buzzers. John buzzes in first, but look at all the player names listed down the sides of the screen now that we've turned status names on. Green means buzzers were active when the buzzers on screen appeared. Look at Michelle's name. It's red, meaning she was penalized for pressing her buzzer too early. We can also see our new countdown timer at the top of the screen. Uh-oh. Time's up. Now what? This is up to the quiz host and the rules established for your quiz. Perhaps the quiz host demands a final answer. Perhaps the wrong answer key is pressed immediately and points are deducted from John's score. Or perhaps nothing happens at all. The timer is just for added drama. It's your choice. This shows how many points John will receive for a correct answer. A wrong answer will be calculated by multiplying this value by the wrong answer factor. 0.3 in this example or minus 30 points. But Robert thinks he knows the answer and jumps the gun, pressing his buzzer now, before we even find out if John knows the correct answer. Nothing visible happens, but the computer has tagged Robert for a two-second penalty. Meanwhile, John gives his answer, but it's wrong. See? John loses 30 points. And notice that the correct answer value has been cut in half. Now Manisha buzzes in. Manisha's name appears, earning her a chance to answer the question. But look at John's name now. It's grayed out because he has already missed this question and his buzzer is deactivated until the next question. Michelle is back in good standing with a green color, but we can see that Robert was penalized with a two second delay for pressing his buzzer before John gave his answer. These status colors will help diffuse any complaints about buzzers not working when people think they were first to buzz in. Okay, Manisha gives a wrong answer. And Sophie buzzes in. Notice that since both John and Manisha have missed this question, their status names are grayed out, and the answer value has been cut in half again. But Sophie answers correctly, and earns 25 points. Nice work, Sophie. Moving on, we see that the scores now reflect the activity from points lost or awarded during the last question. One feature to note about the scores screen is that the individual scores can be edited. Why? Well, if your quiz host presses the wrong key in response to a question, or if a player answering incorrectly convinces the quiz host that their response really should be considered to be a correct answer, this provides a means to adjust the scores accordingly. 
Now that you've seen the advanced features in action in a standard quiz, be sure to watch part three of this tutorial for a demonstration of our team play option that permits you to group multiple buzzers together to act as one team buzzer. To see our complete line of quiz game buzzers, please visit our website. Thanks for watching.